Okay, here we are for Joyrider TV, going out sailing with Owen. Yeah, let's go. And we're going to look at how to write <laughs> your capsized catamaran. Here we go. This is the controlled backward capsize. Woo! <laughs> Easy. Oh no, so we've capsized. <laughs> Most important thing if you're in this position is to get out from this position as quickly as you can. Because if the boat inverts, you don't want to be stuck under the trampoline. There we are, the boat's inverting. Once we're settled in the water, it's a good idea to establish communication with the other member of the team. Are you okay? Wonderful, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> He's very polite, this guy. Okay, and then the boat is inverting. So I'm going to get on him before Owen gets on. It would be very easy from this position for Owen to stand on the tiller connecting bar, but if he was to do that, uh, there's a chance that both cams would invert and what is important is by the time we come to right the boat both rudders are in the locked down position to avoid opposing rudder lock okay so opposing rudder lock is where this kind of thing happens with the rudder where the tiller bar comes all the way back and what can happen is both rudders can be pointing in opposite directions which means that when you pull your boat upright, the boat will just go violently downwind, out of control, and it will be absolutely terrifying. Okay, you could just, so Owen could just swim onto the trampoline. Lovely. So once we're capsized in this position, you, unless you are in impending danger, which we're not, the wind is blowing us down this way, and we've got probably about two miles before we get to the rocks. So we don't need to be in too much of a rush. If it's been very windy, perhaps we're a bit too excited. We could just sit here for a minute. So first, we're gonna take the capsized writing line, which should be tied onto the dolphin striker. Okay, and then we need to establish which corner of the boat is closest to the wind. I think it's this one. I think it's this one. I think it's this one. It's this one. So we're going to pass the capsized writing line over that hull, under that hull, like this. And then we're both going to come over to this hull. And we're just going to lift the corner of the boat, which is closest to the wind. So what's going to happen there is the wind is going to get under that corner of the trampoline. As the wind gets under that corner of the trampoline, a combination of the wind on the trampoline and the air in the mast is going to lift the boat up onto its side, like this. As it comes up, we need to realise that it's coming up and adjust where we're sitting slightly. And there we are. Now at this stage, if it is very windy, the boat might want to flip up on its own and we don't want that to happen uh, unless it's our choice. So we might have to lean into the boat a little bit to stop it from flipping up. The next thing that we need to do is make sure that the main sheet and the traveler are loose, which they are. If it's very windy, we can also at this stage release the downhaul, but it's not so windy, so we're not gonna worry about that here. And we can also release the jib like that. If we do need to release the main sheet and the traveler and one person has to go to the back of the boat, then what's a good idea is for the other person to be really quite well forwards on the boat to counterbalance this weight going back. So we just need to make sure that the jib isn't going to go around the front. So we'll just give that a little pull here. This is only a problem if you've got a fully battened jib. And then what we want to do is get the boat pretty much pointing into the wind. So what we'll do there is just come slightly forwards 
on the bow. This will make the bow sink and the boat will then pivot round. On a bigger boat, you have to get further forwards to really sink the bow down. And then once we're happy with our direction and we're ready, we'll just pay attention to the width of the boat. If you're sailing a smaller boat, like a Hobie 15, a Dragoon, a Dark 15, anything that's not as wide as this then really take care for your head when the boat comes upright and what we're going to do is as the boat comes upright we're going to grab hold of the dolphin striker down here which is going to take your head clear from the mast but it is also going to stop the boat from flipping over the other way Owen's going to go on the line first because he's the heaviest I think he just weighed in at about 95. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And we can hook in to the capsize right in line there. And what we're aiming to do is get as low as possible on the rope, but so that we're not floating in the water. So there we go. With one guy, it's not enough. So I'm going to introduce my weight onto the rope as well. And then as the boat starts coming upright, it shouldn't take much. I'm going to lean in. We're going to grab the Dolphin Striker. Owen's just kicked me in the knackers. <laughs> Once we're upright, we need to get back on the boat. On a 16, it is quite easy to get back on. I'm going to be making a video on how to get back on the boat in more detail. But what I would usually do is just use what I call the swimming pool technique. In this corner. Let's see how Owen's going to go about it. Oh, I'm still hooked on here. So he's still hooked on, he just needs to get unhooked. There he is. So Owen is back on board. If it was more windy, it would be more important for somebody to get back on the boat and take control of the rudders as soon as possible. You can also see at the moment that the mainsail is flogging quite violently, even in this relatively light wind. So this, you can avoid this happening by letting the downhaul off before bringing the boat back upright. 